Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a happy Friday morning over here from good old Helsinki, Finland. Always wishing you well, wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. And before we get into it, oh my God, I want to say a massive thank you to all the people out there. We have just hit over 10,000 subscribers. This community is fucking phenomenal. I, I haven't planned any to, to say anything or anything like that, but it's, uh, and I'm really at a loss for it to be quite honest with you. But my God, this is incredibly humbling and i just want to say thank you to everyone out there the community that, that we built up is truly something special in my opinion we have guys from all over from all walks of life really going for the same sort of a thing which is exactly what i want to surround myself with i never intended for this channel to get this big um it was really to be more of a, a niche type thing you know kind of reaching out to the type of person who's looking to become a trader in a more serious sense uh, again, just wanting to connect with someone who I felt like I was when I first started this um, this whole journey and, and, you know, and to offer the same sort of, you know, opportunity that I felt like I got when I first started by by getting around some of the best of the best traders on the floor of New York Star Change Arca. So again, I just want to say thank you. Um, it's, again, I'm just at a loss for words and, and really, uh, it's, it's really absolutely incredible. So again, massive, massive thank you. Let's get into the charts right over here. And uh, Bitcoin doing absolutely nothing in the last uh, in the last 10, 12 hours since we last spoke. Uh, essentially still consulting below the critical area on the lower time frames as uh, we'll start with the lower time frames as nothing's really changed from a higher time frame perspective. Still consulting below this uh, 3380-ish level. So for me, with my short position, I will still be holding on to this uh, to this more immediate scalp position right over here this 6300 short right over here i'm i'll be keeping that open as long as bitcoin's basically creating lower highs and lower lows as long as it's in a downturn which it's been doing for the for over a year now i will be happy to hold that but this this position right over here i will take this position off um if bitcoin does get back above about 3380 right over here that would be the impetus for that but for now uh consulting well below there in fact we could even put a nice support right over here which bitcoin is flirting with right here right now uh, last four hour dildo did close right back above uh, very low volume and right now with this four hour dildo closing the next seven minutes and uh, 12 seconds we could actually see this break right here right now um, which is pretty fucking momentous occasion right now as uh, there's very little holding Bitcoin up from the lower 3200s um, if this does indeed break I would be looking towards about 3250 right over here and it's more of like a zone right this lower block territory which will match up with the symmetrical triangle that Bitcoin put in about a about a month and a half ago I mean this uh, this was end of December early January now we are all the way in February and uh, just moving time along which just keeps on just, just keeps on seem to move faster and faster uh, as the years pass but the measure move on this baby pointing all the way down to about 3250-ish area. That's still very much in play. As long as we are below the breakdown point, which is all the way at 3850-ish area, 3830, uh, that is that is in play um now this area that we are on is also very important as well because it's a major fib it is the 786 if we bring this guy up right over here you can see that we've been resting on it for the past uh what is it a, a couple weeks ever since the end of january right over here creating a nice little uh do what do you want to call it the inverted cup and handle if you wanted to call an inverted cup and handle it actually does work as one you do have this nice uh pattern of distribution in this area right over here you have the right volume characters throughout you have the right size the right shape the right smell the right taste putting a little bit of a handle right over here but again until this area actually formally breaks I don't care what you call it. I don't care what it, you know, what it smells like. I need to see price action confirmed below this level because we are in hunt territory. Bitcoin has been pretty damn resilient, trying to hold these uh, 3350-ish area right over here. And we will be printing bullish divergence on just about all time frames, I believe, up to a six hour. So this is your four hour right over here. It is technically printing a little bit of bullish divergence over here. Uh, six hour as well should be. Yep, uh, we could. Well... You know, if I was going off this dildo right over here, yeah, I would say so, but uh, very low volume, and to have it pretty much retraced uh, on the next one as it stands is not a good look for this guy. So, again, very, very delicate situation. Uh, Six-hour stokes over here are crossing down once again after get, giving you a snake, but this is not confirmed either. We still have to wait until uh, 0 UTC time, I believe it is, or sorry, 12 UTC time um, when that when that kind of gets ticked on, but uh, lower time frames, very low time frames, like an hourly right over here. We do essentially have another lower high uh, with with this uh, last little run to 3366 right over here so again you know looking at this sort of a thing it <laughs> still just kind of trending down just slowly but surely kind of rolling the hills over so 
when, if you are familiar with capitulation, what it typically looks like is you do get, you know, you, you, you get it, you get it, you get some major downs and then you spend your time going sideways and just boring everyone to death, which is kind of what we're doing right over here. And then typically what happens when the actual event comes is it's just, it's just, it's just a slow rolling over type formation until basically everyone just gives up. I mean, again, that, that emotion of hopelessness and, uh, and lack of, you know, just, I mean, just, just desperation, whether it's for, for true financial reasons or just frustration from people. But, you know, a lot of people will be forced to financially capitulate. That's, you know, it's kind of the, it's kind of the overall, uh, goal of it, you know, for people who do not have other external sources of income, they are certainly going to be at risk, uh, at some point, at some price point And at some time point, you know, you're going to, you're, you will have to for for financial reasons. Again, this this really applies to like the very early adopters who you know thought that this thing would never go back below six thousand or ten thousand for that matter. Um, you know, again, markets market cycles pretty fucking brutal and a lot of people getting a great experience right now uh daily right over here again we are still below all major moving averages as far as the daily is concerned we actually have broken through and confirmed below this 3390 resistance right over here um you know if if, if we do a justice for the daily it is confirmed broken and we are living below it, opening and closing dildos below it as well but again i do believe that the battle is to be fought in the lower time frame so i just wanted to point that out but as far as the higher time frames are, are concerned they are incredibly bearish and i just can't even get this line straight over here sorry about that Let's get that guy actually right. Um, but again, you know, we are getting a great, great insight in what the bots and algos are doing in this market, which is incredibly, uh, which is incredibly algo driven, which is fine. You know, that is how all markets operate. You, it's very naive when, when other, you know, crypto YouTubers and whatever the fuck, you know, they are, um, <laughs> whatever name your social media venue here. Um, you know, talk about that as like some sort of manipulation thing. No, it's it's that way in all markets. We're in a technological age. That's where things are going. At some point in time, it's going to be only all uh, algos, essentially. I mean, you are an algo yourself. I mean, you're just running off of your own inputs, essentially. It's just a little bit more complicated than than, uh, than what a bot can do for now. <laughs> but soon enough, man, Terminators are taking over, baby. Anyways, uh, Fibonacci's kind of give us give us insight into this uh, ratio right over here. You know, we have our major down, 50% down from 6,000 to 3,000, essentially. And then we get our first big bounce up. That bounce uh, finds its first initial kind of comeback around to the 618 Fibonacci retracement right over here, which you can see gets front ran just a little bit. But where's their target going to be if that gets front ran a little bit? Well, it's going to be above the 236, which is exactly where you get it. I, I'm going to guess that that's like the 132 or whatever the, whatever the, whatever the fib is in the one area, um, then comes back down to the 618, tags it perfectly, and then where's the target going to be? 382, just walk it down, baby. Come back down to the 618 once again. It gets picked up once again. The reaction's a little bit weaker, gets sold on the 0.5. You can see it's just getting walked down. Then comes back down to the 618, breaks, and now we're resting on the 786. So to me, the reason why I keep on repeating this, because not only is it, is it important, but... As long as Bitcoin is below this 3460-ish area, 3470-ish area, which, by the way, is now where the daily 21 exponential is coming in around, very, very important, I am pretty bearish with looking for a major move to the downside, most likely. Most likely. Now, I know a lot of people are looking at this as a falling wedge. I don't see any wedges here. I, I don't even trade wedges. I think that wedges are just painted there for to, to dump on retailers, essentially, because people, you know, people just love their patterns. I very rarely see successful pattern traders um, and people got I, I'm, I'm surprised that people didn't learn back over here on this falling wedge when Bitcoin was essentially at the uh, at the 6000 level. And we had been consulting this area for about half a year at this point. Everyone was looking at this, this falling wedge right over here, which actually did break out to the upside. And in July, end of July, but what happens on a falling wedge, you know, and how do you gain that liquidity for people or for or for the bigger accounts? Well, you break it out on low volume and then shove it right back down. Now you got buyers all the way down, which wrecked t uh, a ton of people. Um, so again, all jokes aside, you know, pretty damn brutal, but understand that those things are painted in there for to generate liquidity for the bigger boys. Um, so again, you know, 30, 36 seconds left to go on this four hour dildo. We will be getting resolution on this right now. Um, pretty much right now. We will, uh, let's go, let's go to the highest time frame ending the soonest. This is the eight hour. The eight hour has again, right at, you know, right at this level, I would consider if it does end below here, I would consider this a break. Now, volume confirmation is certainly not there. Don't get me wrong. Volume confirmation is nowhere near there. And and uh, eight hour Stokes probably will actually cross up on this next tick as well. Uh, but eight hour Jewel actually crossing down uh, below all all of our uh, all of our slow indicators right over there. So to you know, is that a, is that a perfect sell setup? Fuck no, it's not. But it does tell me that you know the trend is once again you know getting when uh, when the light blue gets gets below all those guys and they're all kind of like stacked against each other, which they're actually not perfectly situated right now. Um, 
that's you know that's pressure on that is pressure on um but as you can see yes we did close it below uh, let's go down to the four hour and check how this guy ended yeah four hour a little bit of a uh, just basically giving up last four hours uh um what's it called uh gains and now i can actually move the stop on my short to the high of this guy right around 3369 or something like that whatever it might be uh let's just actually do that right now because i don't really see the I don't really see the, uh, let's do 0 0.5, just in, just in case. You never know where Dribbert works to. I also have some options positions open as well, um, just selling some of the uh, 3,500 calls. Uh, the the 3,500 call strikes um, expire in February 22nd. So again, just letting that one ride as well. Um, and, uh, and that's how I'm going to be playing this guy right over here. So let's see how the four-hour stokes ticked. Uh, yeah, they are hinting out across the upside. What about eight-hour right over here? I'm going to guess that they are, well, they, 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 they certainly are losing their aggressiveness, but uh, not necessarily crossing up just yet. Let's go check out the two hour, um, two hour ended as well. Two hour is crossed up and then the hourly right over here still crossed up as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's interesting to me, if, to me, this is just another lower high right over here now confirmed. Um, if it were to pop back up to about 30, <laughs> Jesus Christ, these, the numbers are so close together now. It's very visually deceiving, but if, if Bitcoin were to pop back up to like 3361, I wouldn't even mind selling a little bit there. I'm not going to, I don't, I don't have any intention to add to my position. Again, there's a lot of bullish divergence building up on all these lower time frames. Uh, let's see if the eight hour, uh, what is the eight hour saying right over here? Eight hours a little bit hard to get. Cause I don't. I don't necessarily see this as bullish divergence until we have a confirmed local low over here and we don't have a confirmed local low just yet. We just have a slow rolling over effect, which looks incredibly ugly. I mean, it looks really fucking ugly the way that it is right now. Um, you know, I, to me, this looks more like rolling over than anything. Uh, now, of course, because, you know, does this work as an inverted cup and handle that we're looking at right now? Yeah, I mean, it does. It, it, it does. It does have the right shape, the right size, the right smell, the right taste. So let's just play around with it and see where the mesh move on this baby would kind of come out to. Uh, as I'm curious myself, does it match up with perhaps any of the other big areas that we're looking at? Oh, my God, it does. 3250 right over here, which is also, by the way, the 886 Fibonacci retracement, which Bitcoin actually does have a nice history of playing off of. It does seem to get a lot of play in, uh, in cryptocurrency. So overall, you know, looking at this guy, I am, you know, as as long as we're below that 3380 area, I am looking for this to likely get likely get hit. Um, that is the path of least uh, least resistance right now. And if we just extend this guy out, we can see that we are overall making a massive a massive, well, not 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 as massive as over here, but a massive uh, descending triangle, which Bitcoin also does have a history of playing out. Again, I like triangles. As far as patterns go, I like triangles. I like ascending, descending, and symmetrical triangles and channels, but not, pretty much nothing else as in cryptocurrency land. In traditional land, a little bit different, a little bit different. Head and shoulders actually play out pretty damn well in, in uh, traditional markets. Um, but yeah, you know, overall, looking at this guy right over here, um, Nasty, fucking nasty, fuck, uh, fucking ugly. The volume characteristics on this at large are that of consolidation. The price action is incredibly corrective. We are creating lower highs and essentially lower lows in the lower time frames, and just slowly but surely rolling this guy over as the lows come ever increasingly near. Now, here's a thing. Here's a thing. Um, going over here to our chart on Bitstamp so we can actually get a use of the higher time frame uh, simples and exponentials. Well, let's actually start here while, while we're here. I'll start with the 10 simple represented by the red. We are being governed by the 10 simple on the red. Now, we do not have continuation on Bitstamp and GDAX, but we do have continuation on BitMexico and Finex for Bitcoin, which is interesting to me. I do put more weight on both Finex and BitMexico when it comes to price action because they both they they both seem to get it right more often than not but again GDAX and stamp do not um, do not have new lows on the weekly so the, the reason why I mentioned this because we put in a bearish engulfing dildo right over here on the rejection of the 200 exponential on the cross of the 10 simple the red 10 simple right over there so to me that was that was a big tell that was a big tell that we want to go lower um then consolidation, consolidation, continuation. And I want to see continuation on Stamp and GDAX, which would be had if we could get all the way down to 3330. But you'll notice, and the reason why I bring this up now and kind of tie back in together what we were speaking on when we first began this video is the 200 simple moving average now represented by, by the red is coming in where? It's coming in at low 3300. So the reason why this is important is because if Bitcoin actually does get back down to 3250, I I think that there's probably going to be a little bit of a bounce there, but overall it probably gets faded and we do move lower. I think that this that this uh, consolidation is incredibly mature and it is ready to roll sooner rather than later. That is my opinion. 
I do not trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis and technical analysis says, hey, still wait for either the weekly 200 simple moving average, which is again around 3300 to be broken or a daily total closing below 3250, whichever one happens first, then you're likely, you know, ready for that flush down to uh, to new lows. But uh, but my opinion after looking at this is that we have already tested the 200 simple once and we've tested it again this uh, this week as well. I mean, when you come within about $10, 10 to 20 bucks of, of that number, especially on a weekly close enough is fucking close enough, man. Um, so if uh, if Bitcoin does start ticking back below this area, I it would appear to me that it is no longer being defended. And the reason why I say that is because the defense seems to be coming in at the current level right now. You see all these wicks around, or sorry, below the 3350-ish level. That to me is telling me that, hey, that's that's where the buy pressure is. And that is, that is essentially your response so far. So again, just kind of trying to get into the actual it tap, tap into the collective consciousness of the market. That's what I'd be saying. But hey, at the end of the day, it is, you know, if, if I'm going just purely off a technical analysis, I would be saying, yeah, you know, wait, wait, uh, wait for it. Of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor just sharing what I'm doing. And these are that sort of same situations that you might find yourself in because it's quite literally right in front of our fucking face. Go fuck yourself, SEC. Just kidding, SEC. I love you, SEC. CZ, I love you too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, you know, looking at this guy, um, lower time frames while we're here, let's let's actually go back to GDAX chart. Uh, you will notice that at this current level and looking at the volume profile, we, we are kind of hanging on to the last high value node in this area. Um, and that also tells us that that also kind of tells me that, hey, even if Bitcoin does come down to this 3250 area right over here, it's probably just going to be a bounce because people are looking for the double bottom and double bottoms, in my experience, typically don't hold like you, you might get that initial bounce for a scalp, maybe even maybe even a nice gain sometimes, but typically they do get faded into um so yeah if uh, if 33 and this yeah this last this last high high value note is 3350 so again you know 3350 still the support i know that on the lower time frames that where we we're just looking at it does kind of look like um it, it does kind of look like that horizontal is uh is broken right now but i'm not really seeing volume confirmation on that i you know yeah price action is price action um but uh, looking at this, it, it might be a little bit more complicated than that. In fact, I'd be comfortable with saying it is a little bit more complicated than that. Um, so yeah, 3350, the critical area for me um, to see. So again, uh, if this area does get lost, I mean, yeah, you do have a little bit being done right over here, but let's let's really go over to the higher time frames and uh, go back to the stamp um, chart right over here. And uh, let's see, you know, as as soon as you lose this kind of higher value node, which is still already, already kind of getting waned a little bit, but technically, come, technically speaking, coming in right around where, right around, you know, 3,300 essentially, um, then nothing doing all the way until mid 2000s right over here, which is a very similar setup to what you had, albeit not as dramatic at the 6,000 area. Once you lost 6,000, there's just nothing doing all the way till you know, high 3,000 essentially. Um, so putting back on these guys right over here. Yeah, if Bitcoin does break, then I would be looking down towards, oh man, did I? No, uh, okay, it's yeah, it's all good. Um, yeah, I, I would be looking towards this next sort of block right over here, this blue box territory encompassed be, uh, between th uh, 2300 and 2600. You got some nice high value notes coming in right around there. We have the 886 Bernard true retracement, which, you know, that sounds pretty familiar, right? Because that, that is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 right over here. We do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area. We do have the BLX index showing that the 377X Exponentials coming in right around that area, which is incredibly important from a traditional market standpoint. So I'm very interested to see it, 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 if Bitcoin gets down around to it, what the reaction is going to be. Because I would imagine that at this point in time, when Bitcoin is is having like a, lo a longer lifespan, that's going to come into more and more play, I would imagine. Um, but anyways, uh, monthly over here, monthly over here tells me that Let's get let's take off the volume profile. The volume profile on BL, on BLX index is going to be completely uh, useless, by the way, because you have this one off right here, which just wrecks everything. The BLX index is not good for anything other than price action, as far as I'm concerned. The volume the volume read is it's it's faulty. Um, but anyways, the BLX index right here. Let's actually put on the ten simple. I just want to get it back on there. Not really too many things to be aware of with it just yet. It is it is getting damn close to the twenty one, no doubt about that. But not not necessarily. It's still like a couple months away from crossing. But uh, but more importantly, we have broken the green. 55 exponential, which tells me that, hey, even if Bitcoin did uh, start playing out that bullish divergence that we looked at on the lower time frames, I would not, I, you know, if Bitcoin got back anywhere around that green 55 exponential on the monthly, I would look for a major sell as we have broken it for the first time in Bitcoin's literal history. Um, that actually did give you the, uh, the ultimate bottom in 2014, just saying. But, you know, looking at this guy, um, looking at this guy, 
if Bitcoin did even, you know, even get around this area, it's probably gonna be a good sell to me. I believe that Bitcoin is going to be uh, operating below this area. Uh, it, it, sorry, I, I believe that Bitcoin is going to be operating below that area until it puts in its lows and before going back above, if that makes sense. Sorry, let me let me re-represent that. So what I can say is on is, is like the same thing on the weekly right over here, the 200 exponential, this purple moving average right over here, as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly deals below there, I have no reason to be, you know, bullish on this thing, thinking that it's going back, you know, to above, you know, above 5,000, let alone fucking, you know, mid 4,000s or even low 4,000s. And that's coming in right around uh, 41.25. So that has been governing our lower highs ever since we uh, ever since we dropped off this ascending triangle right over here so again um going back to the monthly to me this is an even more powerful thing the green 55 on the monthly so if bitcoin did get if, if bitcoin even waked back above you know 3650 it's 3700 which is where it kind of is um i'd be looking for a sell i'm not saying that bitcoin is going to go back around there i'm just saying that if that were to happen that would be a phenomenal play and we'll actually kind of go through the lower time frames and discuss the implications of that but to me more and more likely that bitcoin comes back comes down to this uh, 89 exponential this cyan line right around here around 2450 2500 which by the way again in that blue box territory before closing before closing a monthly total back above the 55 exponential right over here which again is around 3650 now 3650 also important or that area is important 3650 to 3700 because remember the descending triangle that we are that uh, that i believe that, that we are playing out right over here um currently uh, filling this guy out um the upper resistance of this ascending triangle would be coming in right around where right around 3650 actually at current price action uh that would be the 0.5 fib over there as well but remember i'm not really looking for that to happen i'm not bullish on this or sorry bullish is the wrong word i'm not i'm not at a, in any way shape or form bullish on this but what i what i mean to say is that i don't want to be looking for upside on this as long as we are below this guy here 30 3469 as long as we're below 3469 i don't i I'm not interested in any sort of longs. I'm not interested. In, I mean, not that not that I'm like interested in longs to begin with, um, but I'm not interested in taking off my shorts or not looking for shorts. Uh, but the second that Bitcoin gets back above this range right over here, 34.69 again, then yes, I don't want anything to do with shorts for a little bit of time. I probably might even want to consider taking a long as I think it'd be very, very likely that you get another stab back up and to fill out this range somewhere around that 3650 area that we just spoke about. Um, but remember, you know, going off the daily right now, we are ha we are having this major resistance, the major daily 21 exponential starting to crawl its way down. It is now coming in where? 34.69. So as Bitcoin spends its time kind of rolling sideways here, all of the major movement averages are allowed to catch up, and that's not a good thing. It just adds more and more intense pressure to the downside as the slope of this guy has not changed. You see the 10 simple is flattening out a little bit, but and I guess they have converged a little bit over here, but again, um, not a good setup. You even have the green 55 on the daily starting to come down right around where? Right around, you know, 3650-ish area. So again, a lot of things coming around that area, um, and we do see a lot of confluences between these uh, between these time frames. I don't see any sort of a falling wedge here. I don't care about falling wedges. I don't trade falling wedges. I, I, I think it's silly. Um, and a lot of the times, even if you get a breakout, as we saw before, it just gets faded. Uh, pattern traders, very rarely do I ever see successful ones. Um, I have seen successful ones, though. I, I do know some people who can do it. More more so in traditional markets, not necessarily in in, uh, in cryptocurrency land. Um, so yeah, you know the, the 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 biggest thing for the bulls right now is that we do have bullish divergence all the way up to the six hour um, dildo time frame. However, the six hour dildo time frame needs to needs to confirm itself as a local low right over here. Otherwise, this will be quickly negated. So how do we confirm ourselves as a local low? Well, need to get above the high of this potential low dildo right over here. This hammer dildo, if it is going to be a local low. Um, but right now, you know the the RSI finding resistance at the exponential, which again tells me that this is you know pressure is on we have six hour stokes crossing down or hinting at a cross down again not confirmed just yet and six hour jewel is ooh, this is a major decision point for the jewel and this is what i love about the jewel if the jewel bounces off here to the downside this will be a nice down um uh, that uh, that will be a nice down if it does if it does t uh, tick up though then then probably do have some nice uh, I, I just wouldn't see much stopping from about 3400 ish area 
Um, okay, so yeah, you know, a lot of things to be aware of in here, and those are the big, you know, that's that, that's kind of the bit the big reason on this. Sorry, I should also denote that this ascending triangle does have a measure move as well, and, uh, and and it does kind of line up with the other things that we were talking about. You know, if, if things do break down below 3250 from price action standpoint, uh, then I'd be looking for where is it? Come on, daily, show me the money or show me the dumpage uh, down around. Come on, bait. You motherfucker trading view. There we go. Uh, 2400. So again, a lot of things coming around that 2400 level. We have the monthly 89 exponential. We have the weekly 377 exponential. We have the measure move off this ascending triangle. We have some major volume profile action coming around there. We have some historical horizontal trend lines coming around there. And we have the 886 Fibonacci retracement from the ultimate high to the ultimate low of the last market cycle, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 as well. So a lot of things coming around there. Does that does that guarantee that it's going to be the ultimate low for Bitcoin? No, it does not. Although it is certainly a potential reversal point, but just like any other reversal point, I need to or potential reversal point, I need to see the response of price action to make my own response and denote if, if, if this is if this looks like a major market cycle low or not. This area right over here technically could have been a major market cycle low and, and a reversal point. But after we saw the reaction a couple uh, about a week and a half after we saw the reaction, it was very clear that this was not it. This this this, is, this has no markings of a major market cycle low, um, capitulation low or anything like that. Again, if you want the full and explanation of that, check out the video, the the the, the video playlist that I have titled Long Term Analysis. It'll be the most recent video I uploaded in there. Uh, and I do one every Sunday, by the way. Um, but I won't bore you with the details right now. It's all in that video, but I'll just quickly summarize it. Basically, we I don't see the volume characters that I want to see on a, on, on a major low. I don't see the historical volatility rank. I don't see the regular volatility rank. I don't see the MVT signal that I want to see. I don't see the percentage I don't see the percentage reaction that I want to see I don't see the and the time spent at the low is just not really indicative of it being a low either so again a lot of things kind of lining up there for 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 not the most healthy read um Anyways, uh, yeah, I think we covered up Bitcoin pretty damn well. Let's actually let's go check out GBDC, which did close the day up. So we were we were watching this yesterday, and uh, it was flailing around this region. It actually ended up closing that last four hour dildo as a bullish engulfing. I mean, is it technically a bullish engulfing? The last one was a green dildo as well. But you know, my point is that it was it was, uh, it was some good buying right over there. And uh, yeah, we are technically right at resistance. We are at this three dollars and ninety two uh, ninety two cent resistance. But here's the thing, when it flails around at the breakdown point like this that is typically a warning sign in my experience so if is this going to be a bear trap or not i mean the buying on this is incredibly anemic the volume on it is just about nothing it's 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 not a zilch but again i don't want to argue with price action if it breaks back above three dollars and 92 cents i i think that bitcoin's probably gonna have a bounce you're probably gonna see bitcoin have a bounce and, and probably a nice bounce as this thing can get going a little bit i mean it's i, I wouldn't be surprised if it came back to like you know four uh, four bucks and ten cents or something like that um so where would that put spot charts at i, I don't know i guess 3500 maybe 30 yeah so, somewhere right around there 3600 maybe the top of the descending triangle uh, resistance so again um be careful be careful because this alongside our lower time frame divergences does suggest that you know bitcoin uh Bitcoin could very easily bounce here. Um, let's go back to our higher time frames as well. We don't really cover the higher time frames because they really haven't changed all that much. Um, but daily, right over here, let's just check on the the uh, the the oscillators. We have daily Stokes still headed back down again. In you know, reject from getting out of the bearish control zone and back into the critical zone. Daily RSI trending below the exponential. And uh, yeah, uh, what about two day? Right over here, two day we will be sending in another. Or sorry, we just we just actually got a new tick on this. And two day Stokes are still headed down. They are hinting at a loss of momentum which again this makes me very cautious i i have a hard time i don't want to be adding in a position like this i want to be holding my short and be very 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 quick on the trigger finger if this thing again what you know again goes above 3380 i believe it was uh two-day dildo um uh hidden hidden bearish divergence right over here right over here making higher highs in the oscillator making lower highs on price action right over here right over here in the overall context of a downtrend likely coming back down to the edge of the bearish control zone but again it's a two-day dildo time frame it takes its fucking time We've been watching this for the last two months, and <laughs> you know it's still playing out. That's my point. You know, when I talk about all these sorts of things, I don't want to get people excited thinking that this, you know, that a major move happens like today. We're looking at you know almost three months of price action now. So, uh, so when I say relatively soon, that really means like a couple weeks to a month um, for for resolution of this. But yes, it it is it is very much it is incredibly mature. You see that nice orderly drop off in volume, get into the small pitter powder. We are literally at. 
uh, some of the, some of the biggest lows as far as Bitcoin volatility goes, um, historically speaking, uh, this is let's actually put it on linear scale. Yeah, you can see that we are at, at around the volatility ranking of where we were in October, which that this kind of feels a lot like October as well, where like a five dollar move feels like a, a break, a major breakout or breakdown. Uh, Bitcoin has very rarely seen this level before in its history. In fact. Only really in October of 2018, um, in November, early November, and we are down there once again. So this would also be suggesting that you know likely see a, a move relatively soon. But last time we were in this range, we actually did spend about two weeks there, about two weeks there. So yeah, you know I, I do feel comfortable saying that you know when I say that this thing is happening relatively soon, relatively soon on a time frame like this is two weeks, not you know not three months away. Um, so yeah, uh, like you know going to take its time um depending upon your d depending upon your perspective and the reason why why i'm kind of like repeating this ad nauseum is because a few people are reaching out to me saying like you know uh like why isn't it moving now why isn't it moving it's like well this is a market not a video game and it takes its time it's it's one of the purposes of this is to frustrate people the uh, less emotionally mature people to go into positions prematurely and again, still want to see confirmation on those uh, on the time frames that we spoke about. Let's go over to the longs and shorts now. Longs and shorts uh, showing again that still the imbalance between thirty-two thousand and twenty-six thousand. Actually, both adding in the last uh, day since we last spoke. Um, and we have about three and a half thousand shorts hedged, so really twenty, a little under twenty-three thousand open shorts versus thirty-two thousand open longs. It is a severe imbalance, and this we are at the range where you know longs are kind of getting near. Traditionally speaking, where 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 you see a lot of people where where you see a lot of people get liquidated. I mean, anywhere in this red box is where I see major tops being put in and major dumps being put in, and we are once again getting near that thirty three thousand level where it kind of starts at. But again, you know, I mean, it can get all the way to forty thousand. You know, historically speaking, for shorts over here. Shorts are, you know, around twenty six and a half thousand uh, open shorts and, you know, less important for this guy uh, as, as as much as just it getting down to this critical level not too long ago in the middle of January, which does line up with major dumps as well. Uh, so when shorts when, when shorts are relatively, you know, when when there's not too many people short, it does offer up the potential for people, you know, plenty of coins to be, to be dumped on short. And by the way. Right now, the the funding rate, the daily interest rate for shorts is nothing, whereas the daily interest rate for longs is not is is almost not point not three, which is again not that high, but certainly not low either. Um, historically speaking, down around this low twenty thousand region range, we actually do see some major dumps. I mean, this was you know March dump from ten thousand to six thousand. This was August dump from eight thousand to six thousand. This was November dump from six thousand to three thousand. We're once again in this range, so people uh, people getting interested with uh, with putting on some shorts. And again, just another thing, kind of suggesting that this is you know, this is not again. If if, if you want another reason why why the low is not in, well, this is a goddamn good one right here. You want to see this the opposite essentially. You want to see shorts much higher than the longs um, in that ratio. So you know, I'm trying to represent both sides uh, as well as possible. I hope I'm being pretty clear. Let's go check out traditional markets now. Uh, traditional markets actually playing out some down yesterday. In fact, confirming this as a local high to me. Um, Ending the day back above the 200 exponential moving average, but I would imagine that if we did pop back up to 272, probably have a nice scout play right over there. Again, I, you know, I, <laughs> this is a very difficult one because my opinion is look for local tops because I think that this bitch reverses. <laughs> but as far as technical analysis goes, uh, that says hold your horses. This has a lot of work to do before it confirms a reversal. You got support right here at 266 and a half. If that fails, and you got 261 and a half right over here, which is very important. If 261 and a half fails, then yes, then reversal talk is back on. You know back to you know back back to prior lows um but uh i'd imagine that probably so, what's going to happen is we're gonna, probably going to do something like this probably going to do something like this where it just slowly but surely just gets ground down and this you know again you can see that this is going to take some time right uh coming coming from the ultimate high right over here something like that so you know i don't know what is that like march maybe uh comes down to this level um Again, it's 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 likely to take some time, and I don't really believe too much in this sort of uh, this sort of a thing to begin with. But 
overall, you know, you do see you do see some very interesting things going on in the stock market. Uh, but again, Intel, you know, as long as 261 and a half is, is available, I don't really think it's too appropriate to be talking about a major reversal. Although my opinion is saying, you know, look for the next local top. Is this it right here? Perhaps if this if this area does get taken out, you know, 270, what is it like 273 and a half is our current high of uh, of that top. Then, yeah, then, then I'd be looking towards, you know, 278, 280 ish area and look for a local top right around there. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts on that one. Let's go check out Mr. Ripples over here. Mr. Ripples nipples hanging around 29 cents. Uh, daily looking, mm, I mean, daily is, ha hasn't really done anything different. You know, we are hanging on the lows. Not not a good setup. Daily Stokes uh, getting rejected from getting out of the neutral zone and down. We have daily RSI just testing the or I mean testing the exponential right over here, getting shoved right back down. I mean, it's not you know it's not a good setup. Um, and, but again, nothing's really changed. Nothing's really changed here. Uh, three days very ugly, but until you actually break 28 cents, it's hard to get super bearish on this. Looking for lower lows down to you know mid mid teens, high teens area. By the same token, if if, uh, if Mr. Ripple's nipples could could break above uh, 34 and a half cents, then things look a lot more rosy, or, or sorry, a lot less uh, dire, I suppose, um, and not like the wolf. And you know, you could have a, you could probably have a run back up into the 40 cent region, maybe in 50 cent region. Um, again, you never know when garlic house is going to flip that switch, baby. But for now, as far as technical analysis goes, an incredibly ugly chart. Uh, Mr. Stellar Rumens over here, again, hanging on his lows as well. Everyone's calling bullish divergence because this is a <laughs> this is what you want to buy when it just keeps on going down. It's like, no, <laughs> not really. Not fucking really. Um, let's see where this where this actually ended up because this this looks eerily similar to Bitcoin, right? Yeah, even even the measure move off that is actually pointed is, is oh it's actually the same thing as what what I just looked at. Yeah, it's actually significantly lower around six cents area. Um, yeah, as, as long as uh, Stellar is below uh, nine and a half cents right over here, it, very, very bad. And this looks eerily similar to Bitcoin. In fact, just taking everything off, looking at this, your major parabolic run up, then consolidate for about a year, bull trap right over here, down, put in a low, retest, you know, re, re, retest the support of the consolidation, confirmed as, re, uh, as resistance, uh, three day little death cross if we go over here, which I believe is being run off of right now. Uh, bad, really fucking bad. And then price actually just starts to follow through. Um, six cents, your next big support support on this guy uh, if that area fails in four and a half cents i mean this is you know it hasn't pumped and dumped like most things but it, it's 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 acting like it wants to it's not good um this is like one over here again uh getting stonewalled at resistance but actually really fighting it off right now you do see the 10 simple uh providing the impetus for its support on the last couple of three day dildos but 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 three day stokes have have confirmed a snake to the downside uh so usually when i see that it does have some pretty nasty implications um for for further follow through in that direction but hey you know as far as price action goes until you actually if you could break 34 and a half bucks which is just i mean it's less than a buck higher if you could break 34 and a half bucks to the upside i don't see much stopping you from uh from from you know 40 dollars essentially and if this area gets rejected 34 and a half bucks and you know you still got support down around here 30 and a half you know 30 bucks down around here which you know, it's it's still it's support until it's not. But I'd imagine that if Bitcoin, Mr. Buterol, the other majors roll over, this this thing probably follows. Um, so yeah, speaking of Mr. Buterol, Mr. Buttersworth's over here. Uh, how's he doing? Uh, still looking like a sick puppy, hanging on the seven eight six, just like Bitcoin as well. Uh, lower time frames did get much more of a pump. Um, you know, coming into this area, we have major wick right over here, another wick right over here, rejection of the 21 all the way through, but uh, still fighting it off, still fighting it off. Um, what I could say a little bit more handily is that as long as you're below 108 and a half on Mr. Buterol, don't want anything to do with it uh, to the upside. But if you can take out 108 and a half to the upside, then yeah, it probably does get another stab at least to 113 on Finex. And uh, and that's where things are a little bit more interesting. If you can get back above that range, then, you know, that, that uh, then I'd imagine that's a situation where Bitcoin's, you know, back above, uh, what was it like 3,500 or, or, or th sorry, 3,469, which is just a better number. And uh, you might get that run into the, into the 125 and a half region right over here. But uh, again, you know, not, not the most pretty chart of all time. Uh, we got four hour Stokes are going to be crossing down fresh. Um, I believe as of last, uh, as, as of last tick, which, which we just saw, um, let's go check out the daily or sorry, 12 hour right over here, 12 hour. What does it look like? Um, not really telling us too much. Still headed down, but losing momentum, that's for sure. Uh, 
Yeah, it's th this one's a little bit more neutral to me than Mr. Bitcoin. The king is the, the king has a little bit more bearish indications than Mr. Buterol. Um, tw last 12 hour dildo did not look too healthy, but uh, again, find it off right over here. I mean, you will have resistance right around this range, right around 3380 ish area. So again, that's, you know, that's still what I'm holding on to until uh, in, until told otherwise by price action. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go do the daily the daily grind on the uh, on the volatility rank. I'm curious what that one is setting into right here right now, and uh, let's go. Oh wow, the 12 hour is actually getting really low as well. Holy shit, holy shit, fuck. Um, 12 hour is getting getting below uh, 0.1. It is below 0.1. Again, the the only times that we see this low are literally like before the you know before a major major move. So like before the break of six thousand right over here, this was a major dump. Um, end of September, this was a major dump in May. Remember that you know ten thousand to six thousand. I mean, it really doesn't get th this low that often. Uh, that's my point. Um, I mean, even you know before that, it never even really got this low. Uh, and then yeah, the, uh, you know all you know these areas right over here. So yeah, this is uh, this is pretty significant to me. Um, eight hours, same sort of a thing. You know last. Time it was this low was was before the big move from six thousand to three thousand. The time before that was you know again May. Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of things suggesting that a major move is going to be coming soon. And uh, given the overall price structure, I would be likely saying it's to the downside. But hey, you know that's why I go off of technical analysis. My opinion not needed. If it gets back above the area that we spoke about thirty three or sorry thirty four sixty nine. Uh, Probably do have a little bit more upside to play out, um, and probably make a make a make a stab towards the 3,700 region, give or take a few bucks. So yeah, you know, again, a lot of people also talking about the fractal. I'll, I'll goddamn fractal. I fucking hate fractals. Fractals are not real. I mean, fractals are real, but that's the deceiving point about them is that they're they're only. <laughs> You could have made a fractal looking at the Wall Street Mark Cycle cheat sheet on the all the way up on Bitcoin on each and every one of these these areas right over here. This area, this area, this area this area and then of course this area and people were doing that trying to get the top and i saw so many people lose their accounts trying to short a fucking blue sky breakout when it was completely unnecessary that is why fractals are quite misleading because at some point in time it will work but how many times did you lose money on the way up before it fucking works um more importantly you know what am i even referring to why am i going on a, sil a silly tirade like this well basically people are looking at uh, 2014 2015 mark cycle and saying that this area right over here is similar to this area right over here and you see in 20 in 2014 2015 you put in a higher high on the weekly so that means that bitcoin definitely has to do it in 2018 2019 right over here well i would argue actually that that is that is a very naive uh misunderstanding of how these things typically work how market cycles typically work which yes they do have brotherly characteristics but they're not identical twins they're not identical twins again uh related by the common factor of human psychology which has been unchanged in hundreds of thousands of years but 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 let's actually go into the underlying uh let's let's actually do a little bit more of a dissection than just oh okay so we went down here and then went up there and and then blah, 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 blah. higher high we're going to 5,000 it's like yeah okay all right um but uh but yeah you know you you see a lot of similarities right you had a descending triangle right over here breaks down uh down in in what you have a 51 and a, uh 51 and a, uh, and a half percent move to the downside then we do the same thing right over here descending triangle breaks down 51 and a half percent move to the downside as well then you have a nice little move to the upside right you have a nice uh what is it like 24 25 percent move to the upside dildo body to dildo body then same thing right over here you know 24 25 percent move to the upside as well done over the course of about the same time we have one two three four Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven weeks before it just starts rolling over again. And right over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen, uh, working its way back down, back to the downside as well. Um, and uh, and and you know, looking at that, that that's kind of a testament to this this part of the market cycle taking longer than the prior, which makes sense. You know, it's a more mature asset. We have more people in the market to shake out. But let's actually put on a let's let's put on a, an external indicator, the MBT signal. Which remember, the MBT signal, the MBT ratio is the network value divided by the daily transaction value, and then interpolated to use a forward, backwards, ninety days movement, uh, uh, simple moving average, essentially. And you can see on this guy that it, it calls tops and bottoms pretty damn well. By the way, you can't use this on a fucking weekly. I know I get, I get this message like every day, <laughs> bro. Have you seen the MBT signal on a weekly? It's saying to buy. It's like, yeah, it's because it doesn't work. On, it's not intended for that time frame. You have to use it on daily. Um, but, you know, you, you see a very similar read in 2018, 2019, right over here. You know, put in some red on the top, then come back, then, then come down. Put in a major low right over here, which I, you know, th this this was this was actually what capitulation does look and feel like. If you did live through that 
through uh, through that first down to 6,000, that sort of intensity and that sort of, you know, flightiness and what was, you know, essentially a 40% move in one day uh, on the actual load. That's kind of what you're looking for. As you saw on this bounce right over here, we had, you know, 25% done over, what was it, 11 weeks? That's, that's not that good. You know, one day, 40%, 11 weeks, 26% and already, and already like faded. Um, then, then kind of putting this consolidation right over here and putting, uh, you know, putting in the warning signals the whole way through. And then we pop down into this 90 area right over here. Well, let's go zoom in on the area in 2014 in question that we were just looking at. And remember that 90 area that, that the oscillator is currently in around. Well, look at this area right over here and then let's bring this guy up right over here. Where's that area around? Oh, 90 as well. Isn't that interesting? You also notice that, you know, putting in a major high right over here, you know, put in, then put in your, uh, in, in your lows and then pop back up for the bull trap. Again, a little bit of a shorter uh, stature on this. But uh, you'll notice again, price action over here gives you a higher high. And in the MBT signal, you have the, uh, you have the signature of, the, of about the same thing. You know, you drop down, put in a low right over here, rally up, put in your first high, come back down to your lows, and then put in uh, a higher high right over here, and then roll over as you get wrestled by the moving average on this indicator. Well, in 2019, we have about the same thing, right? You have, you know, you drop off all the way over here, put in a low, rally up, put in your first high, come back down to your lows, and then put in a second high right over here. But I would argue that that low was probably around the 3,500 range. I think that was the critical area to hold, in my opinion. In, in my opinion, 3,500 was a critical range to hold. The second that Bitcoin gave that up, there was the second that things got, shit got real, essentially, to quote uh, bad boys. Um, so, you know, the indicator helps get rid of a lot of the external noise. Not only are we at the same reading, which again, tells us that this is typically where Bitcoin does not bottom things out. And this thing has been perfect, like literally perfect every single time on calling the actual bottoms, but it just, because it flashes a green does not mean it's like the overall bottom, right? But if it doesn't flash green, it's definitely not a bottom. That's my point. Um, so, you know, looking at this guy, we are actually a living above the moving average on this. But I would imagine that um, I'd I, 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 I would imagine that the second that this thing actually gets right back below that moving average, the second that this thing that that price actually starts to you know crumble as well. So again, let's actually wrap this bitch up. Probably spoken long enough. I apologize about that. I know it's I know my voice is annoying. It sounds like a raspy lesbian, but you know what? We have plenty of ma uh, very serious magic in it, muddy business to get deep and down and dirty into. So thank you again for uh, for joining. Let's just quickly wrap this up. To put it very uh, lightly and bluntly, as long as Bitcoin is below 3380, I'm going to be holding this short right over here. Happy to hold this short. Um, uh, the second that it gets back above 3380, then, you know, maybe I look for another short uh, anywhere around the 3450-ish range. But if price action does get back above 3469, if we have a BART back above there, I don't want to be short. I don't want to be short. I do not want to be short. I want to even maybe consider taking a long as uh, I think price action would probably crawl its way up above, you know, to 3750, something like that. Um, by the same token, you know, did we break the support right over here? We're not really getting the reaction of it right now. I mean, look at the volume on the actual breakage, the, 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 the breakage still that we just saw. It's not too convincing. Um, it's not really convincing at all, to be honest with you. Uh, but hey, it's technically price action is living below right now. But do we are, do we have basically a, a bear, a bear trap in, 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 in order like we see might be forming on GBTC. Well, we need to just wait and, and, and see where GBTC opens to start the day. If it opens up lower, I'm going to, I'm going to imagine that this actually does get faded. If it opens up higher, then eh, it's probably going to be a bear trap if, if that, if that does happen. So we'll just have to wait for, uh, for traditional marks to open up and then we can actually watch that one together. But for now, that's essentially what I'm looking towards. Um, if Bitcoin does break this to the downside and have some more follow through, but basically just taking out the low of the last dildo, if we can just tick below, uh, what is it on GDAX? It's 54 bucks, then I'd be looking for, you know, probably 3250 at that point. I just don't see anything stopping you uh, in the way. So again, that's going to do it for today. I, again, I want to say massive, massive thank you. Oh my God, at 10,000, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so flattering and so humbling, but it's also so fucking cool because I feel like for the most part, this channel has attracted the exact type of person that I wanted to join and the, the kind of person I want to surround myself with. Again, when I, when I went more independent, I, it was boring. Like, you know, you do, you do the independent thing for a few years. And then after that, you're like, 
I'm kind of isolated <laughs> and I quite literally do live in a cave. So it's been amazing to meet all of the really fucking cool people that are in this community. Um, you know, I love it when people reach out and, uh, and you know, and it's just like, it's always, it's always positive. It's always fucking positive. And that's the sort of message that I want to have. So again, massive, massive thank you. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, again, I don't even know what to say. It's so, it's so incredible. It really is. Um, never, never, thought that that was, you know, that was never really my intention, but, uh, you know, I'm open to it as long as we keep, you know, ha have, have the night, have the right 10,000, which I do believe we do. So again, guys, massive, massive thank you. Um, I'll probably be, be back on later for some live stream action. Hopefully we can, we can get some uh, price action because that would just make it a little bit more fun. But if not, then we can probably do, you know, we can probably just chat around. Um, I'm going to be working on the uh, psychological series uh, soon as well. I'm really excited about that. And I was really impressed to get a lot of the feedback on it that I did. So, um, so definitely looking forward to that and I'll see you later. So take care and uh, pleasure to speak with you.